Hi guys, welcome back to Christian Communities, a personal plan for real life survival. In this video today, location familiarisation. Now as you're aware, I'm a part of Dartmoor Safe Location and I've already done a familiarisation for Dartmoor, but I'm doing this video to help you as an example to show you the sort of things that you need to be looking for when you do a location familiarisation. Okay, so grab your personal plan and turn to page 66. Location familiarisation. I'm just going to read it to you. Once a potential location meets the safe location format list requirements, you will need to go there in person. By doing this, you will familiarise yourself with the area. At first, using online tools is essential for finding the safe location and is also helpful for studying the area. You cannot solely rely on just seeing the location online. This is because you can run into potential issues and surprises if you are not careful. While at the safe location, gather intelligence on your location. This is so that you can be the most prepared for when we flee to our safe location. It is absolutely crucial that we do a location familiarisation for each location that we're a part of. This is so that there are no hidden surprises. If it's no good, go back to your online tools and look for another potential safe location. You will have to repeat these steps until you find one. So to make this process easier, this video is in two parts. The first part is doing a familiarisation and checking to see that what we found online matches what we see in person. If however it's no good, then you will have to go back on previous videos and repeat the steps until you find a new potential safe location and once again do a location familiarisation. For the second part, if what we see in person matches online and it's all good, then we'll grab our personal plan, we'll turn to page 22, which is the personal plan tick list, we'll look for a position for our main camp, a camp meeting spot, camp layout, and we'll gather intelligence on our location, in which I will guide you through in both parts. Before we get on to part one, unfortunately, there's always someone, and I've got to put this in here. So this is a disclaimer for this playlist. This playlist is for educational and general information purposes only and is not a substitute for professional advice. Should you decide to act upon the information in this playlist, you do so at your own risk. Of course, pray about all things. Next, it is April 2024. It is fully legal to do wild camping at Dartmoor. It is down to you to research current laws and to obey them at your safe location. But do remember this. We will be fleeing to our safe locations in natural disasters and the hard times ahead. It's really important that you pray about everything that you do. Okie dokie, let's get this show on the road. My safe location is one hour and 51 minutes from me. Head southwest on Rosalyn Crescent towards Vincent's Close. Now at this stage, you don't need to worry about wasting money on buying maps to your safe location and of your safe location. Because doing a location familiarisation is the final piece of the puzzle before we decide through prayer if we're going to confirm this to be a main safe location. And if you do confirm it to be your main safe location, you want to be living either on it or as close as possible to your safe location. This is because every minute counts within a fleeing situation. Imagine there's a tsunami inbound. You do not want to be spending hours driving to your safe location. You want to be able to flee there like that, straight up onto your safe location, get your camp set up. You don't want to be messing around. The only reason that I live so far from my safe location is I personally believe that I'm going to be living in America at some point. And when I do get to America, I will find a safe location and either live on it or as close as possible to it. But until then, Dartmoor is my safe location. So if anything goes down, Dartmoor is where I'll go. But for you personally, you want to aim to move as close as possible to your safe location. Pray about it. I've been driving for just over an hour and a half now. This is part one of this video. So again, exactly the same as the safe location format list and everything we've done online, we start with elevation first. On the approach, you should notice that your safe location is of a higher elevation than the approach to your location. As you can see here, this is my safe location directly in front of us. The next sign that your elevation is good, and I know it's kind of obvious to state this, but you should find yourself driving uphill. And if you've noticed both of these points, then your elevation should be okay and you can tick it off. So we have the elevation off grid. This is off grid.
So we've arrived at the safe location. Now this is whether it's a pre-selected safe location, a new safe location, or a backup safe location. Always, always, always do a location familiarization. When you're at your safe location, you're looking for this. First of all, forest. Does it have forest? As you can clearly see here at Dartmoor, yes it does. Next, does it have a reliable water source? As you can see at Dartmoor, it clearly has a reliable water source. Does it have vegetation? Yep, it has vegetation. So in summary, let's go through this quickly again. Is it over a thousand feet above sea level? We saw in line that it was. As we approached the location, we saw that the elevation is high. Is it off grid? We saw in line that it is and we've seen in person that it is off grid. Does it have forest? We saw in line that it does and we can see in person that it also does. Does it have a reliable water source? We saw in line that it did, we see in person that it does. Does it have vegetation? We saw in line that it does, we see in person that it does. This safe location therefore matches the safe location format list. Now when you do a safe location familiarization, if any of these factors are missing, You'll either have to go back to step one, pre-selected safe location and follow the steps again. Or if it's a brand new safe location, go back to step three and repeat the steps until you do find a safe location that matches the safe location format list. And that is part one of this video complete. This only applies to those of you who are a part of a pre-selected safe location. So this means you are following the steps in step one. You watch the welcome video. You joined a pre-selected safe location. You are just doing checks on your safe location by doing a location familiarization. It turns out that the checks you've done in your familiarization is not the same online and you deem it unsafe. If you deem the pre-selected safe location unsafe, can you please do us all a favor? Can you go onto the pre-selected safe location group and make a post on the main Christian Communities group page, tag an admin and say, I have done a location familiarization for the pre-selected safe location. Give the name of it and the country name. It is unsafe. Can you please close it down? This is really important because what you will do is you will save other Christian brothers and sisters a lot of hard work or even worse, those who haven't done a location familiarization and flee there in an emergency situation and it turns out to be no good and this potentially could save lives really important thank you very much now let's move into part two so you've checked everything online whether it's a pre-selected safe location new safe location or backup safe location you've done a location familiarization and everything up to this point is a-okay now what we need to do is camp placement find a nice flat piece of land near our water near our forest where we can place our camp so as you can see we have our water source here directly behind me we have our forest all right this here is a perfect example of camp placement okay so the land is reasonably flat it's open it's spacious we have our forest here which we need the wood for building shelters and making fires and we have our water sloped down the hill. So just in case of flooding, we are higher than the water source. We have our water for consuming, washing our clothes, pots and pans, all the rest of it. Then we have vegetation and forest all around us. A perfect spot to set up camp. Now to kill a couple of birds with one stone, so to speak, we want to save ourselves messing around, driving backwards and forwards to the safe location all the time. All right. What we now need to do is location intelligence. So while you're doing a location familiarization, part one's okay, part two is now okay. All right, you wanna gather as much intelligence on your location as possible. What I mean by location intelligence, right, is all the stuff that I've stated already, obviously, right? But what sort of wildlife is at your location? What kind of vegetation? You see, each of our safe locations are gonna be different because we live in different places around the world, different climate, different wildlife, different vegetation. You wanna take down as much information as you possibly can. So I'm just gonna give you an example. There are multiple ways that you can do this. You can take your phone. I'd probably recommend doing it this way, all right? And you can take a video. Watch in as the example. I just wanna quickly say that I throw our Lord's presence upon me. Please pray about this, amen. Right, so this safe location has pine trees. There's birch trees. Now we know that pine trees are amazing because pine resin is highly flammable, it's good for lacerations and cuts and loads of other benefits. It has birch trees here, 
birch bark is highly flammable. Oh, I see that there's mushrooms. Some mushrooms are edible. Great way by capturing it on video is when you get back home, you can research what's edible and what's not. That's plenty of grass. We know we can eat grass. <clears throat> Oak trees. What sort of wildlife is here? Well, thankfully here in the UK, we don't have to worry about mountain lions or bears, but you might have to at your safe location. So like, you know, by knowing what sort of wildlife is at your safe location, you can be the best prepared for when we flee. You don't want to flee to your safe location and not know that there are bears there. But if you gather location intelligence and know that there are bears there, then you'll pack yourself a bear horn. Do you see what I'm saying? Whereas I won't have to pack a bear horn here because there's no bears here. The very worst sort of threat that I could come across here in Dartmoor is grass snakes and adders. So what I do is I take that information back home on my video and I research it. He was a cute doggy, wasn't he? <laughs> I love doggies. Anyway, back to it. When you're doing a location familiarization, also walk around and really familiarize yourself with the area and the landscape. Really take it in, really document it. You can report it to your community online, but we also have a section within our personal plan, location intelligence. This is where we write down really important information that we need to remember on our safe location. Now, as I say, this spot here, absolutely perfect for a camp placement. You also got to be thinking camp layout. How do you want to lay out your camp? Now, within our personal plan, I have covered camp layouts. The best formation is a circle formation, starting from the middle and banding out in circles around your camp. Most vulnerable out to the strongest within camp layout. I've gone into detail about it within your personal plan. All right, so camp placement, camp layout. All right, let's continue to gather some more intelligence on our safe location. So like I say, really document every little detail of your safe location. And what you can do is take this back to your community, you can take it back home and you can thoroughly research everything and make sure that you are the best prepared for when it comes to us fleeing. I recommend that each of us do a location familiarization. However, if you've joined a community and it's a well-established community, ask them, have you done a location familiarization for the safe location? If one or two or a load of people get back to you on the community group and say, yes, a location familiarization has been done, then that means that you don't necessarily have to go there. It saves you all the work because it's already been done by other members of your community. But don't just assume, make sure that you ask and ask your community for the location intelligence report. You need this information anyway, but if you get the report, then you know it's been done. The other thing guys, it's really important. Once you've done your location familiarization and it's all good, Every sort of six months or so, you want to come back to your safe location, all right? You want to go back to see if there's any changes, obstacles, hazards, anything that the community needs updating on, all right? It's also good for your own personal record, all right? Because things change. And like I've said before, a safe location could have been safe years ago or six months ago, but may not be safe now. So you want to go back and visit your safe location as often as you possibly can. I'd say at least once every six months, all right? Remember to always do all things through prayer. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Okay, so as you can see, I'm now back home from the location familiarization. And you remember we filmed location intelligence on our phone. We gathered as much information as possible. Now, I just want to expand a little bit more on location intelligence. The bulk of our preparation going forwards as of this video, this moment in our planning is going to be based on our safe location. It's really important to know this. Okay. So let's say for an example, if your safe location is in a cold environment like snow and ice winter survival, then you will be preparing based on that environment. If your safe location is in a hot environment like desert, then you'll be preparing based on a desert environment. Do you see what I'm saying? So our safe location comes first within our preparing and our planning. And once we have our safe location in place, we then base the bulk of our preparing and planning on the safe location. Obviously with a little bit of variation for hot and cold survival, but the bulk of our preparing is based on our safe location. So what you need to do now is compile all the information from online and in person Look at it and you really need to pray for confirmation from our Lord if this is okay to be a safe location. And if you believe through prayer that our Lord is confirming to you that it is okay for you to flee there, 
then we now have a main safe location and it is okay to write it up within our personal plan. Once a main safe location is sorted out, do exactly the same again for your backup safe location and make sure you pray for confirmation before you confirm it to be a backup safe location. Now, the next step to write up our main safe location and backup safe location within our personal plan. Okay, so we have all of our online notes and all the research we did in step three. We've done the location familiarization, which is all on our phone. We have our personal plan. So we're going to focus on our main safe location to begin with. So page 22, here's the tip list and here's my personal plan. The very first two pages, my main safe location, my backup safe location. And now we're going to write our safe location name, address and coordinates. This is our live plan that we will be following into real life survival. I've also wrote down the address of my main safe location. You can get this off of Google. So I have my main safe location name, address and coordinates. I have my backup safe location name, address and coordinates. We can now turn back to page 22 and we can tick off my main safe location, done. My backup safe location, done. So already we're starting to build our personal plan. That's our main and backup safe location sorted. Our main safe location address is what we will follow into real life survival. We'll go to this location here. If there's anything wrong with this one, we can flee to this one as a backup. Now, because we've gathered location intelligence already, we can start to fill in location intelligence within our personal plan. Here we go, location intelligence. So purely as an example, my main safe location, pine trees, birch trees, oak trees, mushrooms. And I can go between my location intelligence on here and the information that I've gathered on my phone to thoroughly research this. You could use both pages for your main safe location, which is your biggest focus, but you could also do backup safe location intelligence on this page. But anything that's important to you that stands out about your safe location, write it here, page 34, location intelligence your main safe location. And again, you want to gather as much intelligence as possible. Once you're happy with that, turn back to page 22. And you can tick off location intelligence. So in this video, we've already discovered where I'm going to position my main camp and my camp layout. I need to agree with my community a camp meeting spot. And it says here, my maps. You need to order maps of how to get to your safe location and of your safe location. Once your maps are through, we will mark on the map position of our camp, our camp meeting spot and our camp layout. But as you can see, we have three ticked off within our parcel plan tick list already. But this information here is absolutely crucial. Whether you have kit prepared and packed ready or not, if anything goes down, you now have a safe location to flee to. And don't forget, you've got all of your survival skills in the back here. So if something was to kick off right now, you have a safe location to flee to, you know the name and the address and the coordinates, and you have all of your survival skills here. Now, if you still haven't got your personal plan, first link in the description, click on the link of your country to grab your copy there. Please also consider supporting my work by giving a donation. If you've got any spare change, or you just feel like you'd like to bless me, I'd really, really appreciate it as your help goes a long, 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 long way in helping me. But not only does your help help me, it also goes back into the Christian communities to help others and video production and all the rest of it. If you would like to help me or bless me, uh, second link in the description is the donation button. Bless you so much and thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video as a part of this playlist. Bless you, you be safe.